Everything we think about Ukraine now is different because of one failed mutiny. The Wagner mutiny has changed the narrative of the Ukraine war. When Yevgeny Prigozhin and his Wagner group led an uprising against Moscow in Russia, the word coup was used to describe what was going on. But was it really? A coup is when a, usually a military outfit is trying to topple a government or trying to get rid of the head of the government and replace it with somebody more to its own liking. That's not what happened here. Even when Prigozhin was railing against Moscow, he was not suggesting that Vladimir Putin should be toppled, that the entire government should be replaced. What he was asking for, it turns out, was a lifeline for Wagner itself. There had been a proposal from the government to dissolve the Wagner units that were fighting in Ukraine and absorb them into the Russian military. That would deprive Prigozhin of his income as well as his main source of power, the, the card that gets him to the high table of Russian politics. So he was looking for something very specific in protecting his military strength. That makes it a mutiny, not a coup. A mutiny is when a military unit is rising up for a very specific purpose, usually, not always, but usually because it's not getting the pay that it wants or it's being asked to do something it doesn't want to do. A lot of the attention that was given to the Wagner Group had to do with its operations in Ukraine and its operations within Russia. But the Wagner Group operates all over the developing world, particularly in Africa and in the Middle East. It serves as a kind of shock troops for Vladimir Putin and his foreign policy. The Wagner Group pretends to be or appears to be a private mercenary military, but in reality it is pursuing the interests of the Russian state while getting paid for these services by other countries. It's very active, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, in countries like Mali and Sudan, where it helps military despots maintain control over countries in exchange for access to its resources. In Sudan, for instance, it has the rights to mine for gold that gold winds up, quite a lot of it, into the pockets of the owner or the founder of Wagner Group, Yevgeny Prig Prigozhin. And a lot of that gold also goes into the coffers of the Russian state. It comes from a colonial period when European colonial powers were essentially looting resources in African countries. This is a modern way of doing that same thing. Now, the events of the weekend have weakened Wagner, not just in Russia, but also in the eyes of all of its clients in Africa and the Middle East. Those countries, those governments, those juntas and military dictatorships are now thinking to themselves, if this is a group that rises up against Vladimir Putin in Russia, then can we really trust them? And they'll also be asking, if we continue to work with Wagner, will we upset Russia, which is obviously a far more powerful force? So more than likely, Wagner will find itself losing its status in a number of these African countries, particularly those countries that have other options to look to. Other mercenary groups, there are plenty of those in South Africa, there are American mercenary groups, or groups that already have substantial military power of their own, such as the junta in Mali. Often, African governments have used Wagner to do things that they don't dare do themselves, which is crack down with severe brutality on their own populations. For instance, a UN report that came out a couple of months ago fingers Wagner as having participated in a mass slaughter in Mali, in a village in March of 2022, in which 500 civilians were killed. Wagner, as well as some elements of the Malayan military, slaughtered, shot these people in broad daylight, completely innocent civilians. It was the single worst human rights atrocity that Wagner has been accused of perpetrating outside of Ukraine. So the, the mutiny in Russia has been bad for Wagner and has been bad for business. The challenge for Putin now is what to do about it. He's, it seems, sent Prigozhin off on exile into Belarus, but Prigozhin's still there. And 
the Wagner group is still there. If he doesn't take stronger action against Wagner, then there is a risk of another mutiny down the line. The stories that were appearing about Ukraine in the international media were asking questions of whether or not the Western world would have the patience to keep supporting Ukraine, to allow Ukraine to succeed in its counteroffensive. There was also a sense that time was on Putin's side, that he had nothing to lose, he had the ability, he had both the military strength as well as the war chest to keep conducting this war for months, for years if necessary, until he ground down the Ukrainians, until he exhausted the patience of the West. The mutiny has now changed the way we think about the war in Ukraine. Suddenly, it's now conceivable, imaginable, that if the war in Ukraine continues, if Ukraine continues to make progress, then there could be dissension from within the Russian ranks, that a group like Wagner, or perhaps uh, an element of the Russian main military, would rise up against Putin and force him, if not to leave the government, then certainly to change the way he's conducting the war.